In this video, we'll have a look at how you can use Unity's new 2D animation tools to easily rig and animate your 2D character inside of Unity. The cool thing about this workflow compared to frame by frame animation is that it's extremely flexible and fast to work with since you don't have to leave the editor to create new animations. You can do so on the fly. So to prepare a sprite for animation, there are a few steps that we need to go through. The first step is to create the bones that will make up our character. We'll later use these bones to control our character when animating. Second step is to bind these bones to our sprite so that the sprite will stretch and bend to follow our bones. Here we generate some geometry around our sprite and define what parts of the geometry correspond to what bone. The third step is to add IK to our character. IK stands for inverse kinematics and is a way to make it easier to animate our character by adding game objects that act as targets which the character's limbs are trying to reach for. This way we can simply move around these objects and the character's bones will follow the movement organically. This way we don't have to individually adjust bones one by one. Also, this video is sponsored by Unity. And with that, let's animate our character. So the first thing that we need to do is make sure that we have all of the appropriate packages installed. To do this, we'll go window and open up the package manager. And if you go to the top here and view all the packages in our project, we need to make sure that we have 2D animation, 2D IK and 2D PSD importer. If any of these are missing, we go to the top, navigate to all packages, find the missing package and hit install. And that's pretty much all we need to do for setup. Now, the character that I'm gonna be using here is a PSB file. PSB is a file format that Photoshop can save to. And the cool thing about it is that when we import it into Unity, it will automatically separate your character into parts based on the Photoshop layers. So for this character, I've created six layers in Photoshop. One for each arm and leg, one for the body and one for the head. And when we import it in Unity, we immediately see all of the individual parts. For this to work, we need to make sure to set the sprite mode to multiple and check character rig in the import settings. If you want, you can of course use regular PNG files instead. You just need to make sure to lay out each part of your character side by side, like you see here. Now, inside of Unity, we can open up our character in the sprite editor. To do that, we'll select Sprite Editor, and this is going to bring up a new window. I'm just gonna grab this window and dock it by the scene view. Here in the Sprite Editor, we can see how Unity has chosen to separate our sprite. If something is wrong here, you can of course always go in and manually configure this. But in this case, it looks fine, which means that we're now ready to start working with our character. So let's go to the top left corner here and change from Sprite Editor to Skinning Editor. And this is the window where we can prepare our character for animation. And of course, the first thing that we need to do is create bones. So I'm gonna go to the left here and hit create bone. And we can now click anywhere on our sprite to start placing a bone. And we can click again to create a new one. I'm gonna create two for the chest here and continue one up through the head, something like that. I'm then gonna right click to stop the chain. And of course, we also want some bones for the arms and legs. And we could make these completely independent, but that would mean that whenever we move the base of our character, our arms wouldn't follow. And that's not really something that we'd like. So instead, let's select these bones and delete them. And let's click the bone closest to our arms here. In my case, that's the yellow one in the center here. And you can now see that there's this transparent connection going from the yellow bone to the one that I'm about to create. And that's because we're about to parent our arm to this bone. So let's now create the bones for our arm here. There we go, and right click to stop. With the same bone selected, let's do the same for the left arm. There we go, and right click again. We can now select the bottom bone here, which will go to the legs. And again for the other leg, and right click to close that off. So now we've created all the bones for our character. And a really cool thing about this system is that we can easily see how these bones relate to each other. To do that, we'll hit reparent bone, and we now get an overview of the hierarchy of all of our bones. In other words, which bones are parented to each other. And to see this, we can really just go through and select them. So we can see at the very root here, we have our first bone, then we have our second bone, and this goes into both our head and also continues on to the arms. And at the bottom here, we have our legs. If we want to reparent our bones, we can simply drag them around to change their connections and we can see the UI updating to reflect that. I'm gonna hit Ctrl Z to undo. If you want to create more bones for your character, you can use the split bone tool. And this is of course going to allow you to split a bone in half. Now, once we're done creating the bones for our character, we can hit preview pose. And this will allow us to try and move around our bones. If you click and drag at the root of a bone, it's going to move the bone along with all bones parented to it. 
and if you click and drag further down, it's going to rotate the bone around its root. Of course, you'll notice that this currently only moves our bones. Our character is completely unaffected. That's because we still have to skin our character in order to make him understand what bones correspond to what part of the sprite. We'll do that in a sec. For now, we can hit reset pose to reset all of our bones. And I just want to show you that if we rotate this yellow bone, we can see that the arms rotate with it. Again, because they're parented to this yellow bone. And because the red bone here is at the very top of the hierarchy, in other words, this is our root bone, if we move or rotate this, all of the other bones are going to follow. So let's now reset our pose and let's start generating some geometry for our character. To do that, we can hit Auto Geometry. And for now, let's just leave the default settings and hit Generate All Sprites. And as you can see, this immediately creates this mesh-like structure around our character. You can also see that it's added a bunch of colors corresponding to each of the individual bones. So the first thing that it's doing here is generating the mesh. And the settings here will help you define the detail of this mesh. So the greater the outline detail, the more points will be created along the edge of your character. So if we increase this to a very large number, we can see that it's creating a bunch of points. I find that it's often fine to leave this at a fairly low number. Subdivide is going to do the same thing, but inside the sprite. So it's basically just going to fill in more vertices. If we increase this, we can see that happening. Again, I'm just gonna leave this at the default. If you find that some place of your model is generating in a weird way, or if you just want to get really detailed, you can go in and edit the geometry manually. To do this, we need to first double click on the sprite that we would like to edit. For example, if we'd like to edit the head here, I'll double click on it. And we can now go in and change around points as we wish. If we want to create another vertex, we can hit create vertex and simply slap it on there. We can also create edges, split edges, and I think you get the idea. Now, once we've created some geometry for our model that we're satisfied with, it's time to create the skin weights for our bones. Now, before when we auto-generated our geometry, it actually went ahead and did this automatically. And that's because weights was checked off. If you accidentally generated this sprite without weights, you can always go under auto weights and hit generate. And we can see that by default, it actually does a fairly good job. The head here is mostly influenced by the green bone. The bottom of the left arm is mostly influenced by the orange bone. The bottom of the torso is mostly influenced by the red bone and so on. And we can actually now preview what this looks like when we start to move around bones. To do that, let's hit preview pose. And let's just try to change around some bones here. We can see that the arm is actually modifying quite nicely. However, once we start to get to the shoulder, it does a bit of weird stretching. If we move our head, we can actually see that it looks fairly nice. However, it might change up the shoulders a bit too much. The torso also bends fairly well, as does the right arm. But again, we might have a problem with the shoulder. And the legs work pretty well as well. Now to manually edit this, we have a few tools. One that I found works really well is the possibility to change bone influences. If we click on the bone influence button and select a sprite, let's for example select the head here, we can choose what bones will affect this particular sprite. So in the case of the head here, I would actually like it if only the green bone affected the head, not the yellow one. So I'm gonna select the yellow bone here and remove it from the list. If we select the torso, we can see that quite a few bones are currently affecting it. I think it would be great if our arms and legs didn't distort the torso. So I'm just gonna select each of these bones and remove them. Now, this might cause some really weird stretching at first, but that's because we need to regenerate the weights after doing this. Until then, we can just hit reset pose. Let's also double click our arms. This looks good, it's only affected by the arm bones. The same thing with the right arm. The legs are also generated nicely. So that's pretty much all we need to do. So if we now go to auto weights and regenerate, it's going to create the weights based on these bone influences. So if we now go to preview pose and try moving around our arms, we can see that the torso is completely untouched. We can also see the same thing happens when we try and move our legs. And when bending the torso, nothing happens to our head. Our head still influences the torso a little bit. I think it actually does that a bit too much. And this is where we can go in and actually change the weights themselves. To do that, we have two tools. We can either use weight slider. This allows us to double click on a sprite. In our case, let's choose the torso. We can then select a bone and we can then increase or decrease the influence that this bone has using this slider. So if I pull it down, we will see that our head now has less influence on the torso. Now I might have overdone that a tiny bit. It's now only changing this part of the body. 
So to change that, we can go in with a weight brush. And here again, I'm double clicking on a sprite. I'm choosing a bone that I want to paint with. We can choose the hardness as well as the size of the brush. And we can then go in and paint onto the individual vertices how much we want this bone to affect them. So now if we go back to previewing the pose, we can see that we might have overdone that a bit, but you get the idea. We can just as well go back and by holding down control and painting, we can remove influence as well. So once you're satisfied and you've tried playing around with the preview pose and aren't seeing any weird stretching in your sprite, we can hit reset pose and we are now ready to add it to our scene. So let's take the sprite editor and dock it to the right here. And this step is actually ridiculously easy. All we need to do is hit apply and we can then take our character and drag it into our scene. And that's it. That's actually all we need to do. We can now see that inside of this object, we have all the individual sprites as well as our bone hierarchy, where we can go through and view each individual bone. And inside of our scene view, we can of course click and drag on these in any way that we would like to. So you can see just how easy it is to really set up a character and start animating. And the way that this is working is that for each sprite, Unity has gone ahead and created a sprite skin component. And each one of these references all of the bones that have control over this sprite. So for our body here, that's bone one, two, and three which is these three bones. And if you ever want to go back to the default pose, you can always hit reset bind pose for each one of these sprites. Finally, we can of course add IKs to our character in order to make him easier to animate. First, we need to select the base object. We'll then hit add component and we'll search for IK manager and select IK manager 2D. This script is now responsible for IK on our entire character. For this character, I think it would make sense to use IK for the arms as well as the legs to make it really easy to control these parts. So to do that, we need to add four IK solvers. An IK solver is responsible for doing all the calculations necessary on a particular part of our character. To add an IK solver, we can hit the plus sign and here we get three different types to choose from. Which type you want to use depends on your situation. Limp is the standard two bone solver. And this is ideal for posing joints such as arms and legs, which is what we want to do in our case. The other two, chain fabric and chain CCD, are basically solvers that can be used when you have more than two bones in a sequence. The difference between fabric and CCD is what algorithm is being used to calculate the position and rotation of the bones. If you wanna learn more about the differences between the three solvers, I will of course have a link to some documentation in the description. Now let's go ahead and select limb. This is going to create a new limb solver 2D. Let's just rename this to left arm solver. And any solver needs a target. So let's go ahead and create one. In the case of our arm here, we can go ahead and create a new empty game object. Under bone seven, which is our bottommost arm bone, I'm gonna call this left arm target. And I'm just gonna take my transform tool and move this to the end of the arm. Then we can select the left arm solver and drag in the target. We can see that the target now shows up with this yellow dot here. And if we now hit create effector, we can see that both our target as well as our bones turn green. That's because the limb solver is currently acting on these bones. So if we go ahead and drag on our target, we can see that the bones will automatically update to follow around this target. Now, where did the effector go? Well, this was actually generated under the left arm solver and it's called left arm solver underscore effector. So now we simply need to repeat this process for the other arm as well as the two legs. All right, so we now have four IK solvers. Each one of them is a limb solver and each one of them has a reference to a target that is placed at the end of that bone chain, which means that we can now very easily animate our character using these IK handles. You will also see that our legs are currently behaving in a pretty weird way. The reason for this is that when we're dealing with a limb solver, we sometimes need to flip the direction of the IK in order for it to face the correct direction. So now our character is really easy to animate and that's exactly what we're gonna do. Let's go to window, animation, and let's open up the animation window. You can also hit control six to do this. Let's dock it at the bottom here. Let's select our cup and let's create a new animation. I'm just gonna call this animation party. Let's hit save. And let's hit the red button to record. And we can now animate our character. So I'm gonna start him off here and here, here and here. Let's also animate the head here. There we go. And let's move forward a few frames and let's change around the IK handles. And let's try and preview this animation. We can maybe zoom out a bit 
and let's actually move these keyframes over. Let's duplicate the first ones and let's try and hit play. There we go. We've created our first skeletal animation. Awesome. That's pretty much it for this video. From here, it's up to you to start making animations for your game. If you want to see more about the new 2D tools, there will be some links for the documentation as well as the example character in the description. If you like this video and want to see more, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss a future one. Also, make sure to ring the tiny notification bell to get notified when a new video comes out. On that, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in October and a special thanks to Andrew Kalaninko, Art Armin, TrueVR Systems, Simmer.io, Alexander Blair, Cheetah 3D, Jeff Johnson, Infinity PBR, Cyborg Mummy, Dennis Sullivan, Chris, Sheriff Abdullah, Faisal Marify, Fang Sulong, Leo Lasset, Vincent Van Skua, Sreyas D, Derek Heemskirk, Ronan, Tima Polderbach, Bruins Cat, Naoki Wasaki, Gregory Pierce, Larry Tweed, James Rogers, Rob Farron, Pakum Bernier, Erasmus, Robert Bund, Cor Jackson, James P, Anthony Patton, Kyo Swedeski, and Abrisi. You guys rock!